Welcome to tutorial 8, Mass Modeling. Instead of stepping through all of the code creation steps, which are described in the PDF file, which you can find in the downloadable City Engine project for the tutorial 8, I want to explain a few things uh, or a few underlying concepts of mass modeling in City Engine. So if you go to Help, Help Contents, and then into the CGA reference, you see that there are some CGA operations like for example shape L, shape U, shape O or the setback operation here which are used extensively in the mass modeling rules in the tutorial. Now I've created some additional code here to explain what happens actually when you're writing code for urban layouts. So I have assigned the rule here, so let's quickly step through all of these points and explain what happens here. Okay, so here we see that we have a block, a dynamic block, which is um, producing some different lots here and I'm going to concentrate on all of those shapes here. So we see that um, all the street shapes here have been hidden and that this lot here has exactly one, um, one edge on the street side and the other are just um, on neighboring lots. So I have defined three different attributes here. So one is the street distance, so that must have something to do with the the dimension going back from the street here, then the back distance going um, away from the back edge and then the side distance from away from the neighboring edges. So these are just values I'm going to use on, on and on throughout the, the next uh, lines of code. Now um, there are two func functions, I'm going to explain these in a minute. And now there is the first example here which is um, written under the lot A rule. So I'm going to um, assign the lot A rule as the start rule and I'm going to generate this footprint. Now here we see that what was created, there was this L created here, a green L. So how was this done? Um, we see that we have a, uh, basically a, a probability statement here. We have 50% of the cases uh, we have a shape L and else uh, we mirror the scope and then we have another shape L. So what, what this mirror scope here does when I'm creating different seeds is it randomly mirrors the scope to be able to place the L either in this direction or um, in the other direction like so. So this is just um, randomly generating else the one or the other way around. Now the, the shapes which are getting written in uh, or as geometries are the, the, the L shape itself which is defined as a yard that's just colored green and the remainder basically the rest of the lot is then lot A sub parcel that doesn't continue here. So let's continue with the next example here. Uh, I'm going to choose lot B and it is automatically uh, generated. Now here we see that we are mainly using the shape U um, CGA operation which generates basically the same uh, as the L but just a different form as a U. And we have here another um, rotate scope operation and a mirror scope operation what just basically randomizes the scope a little bit. Now let's talk quickly about this function here, 50% true. Um, I mentioned this before, 50% true, this is a function and it says 50% of the cases uh, the function returns true or false. So what this does in this case, it the mirror gets, um, or the, the scope gets mirrored in 50% of the cases. So if I'm going in again and I'm going to create different seed values, you see that all of these um, geometries 
are randomized. And that is obviously very uh, important for mass modeling of cities um, because you do want some controlled randomization. So let's continue with lot C here. And I'm going to choose the start rule. And here we see, let me show the wireframe with the 7 key. Here we have a different setup using the setback operation. And we we have written, or the code is actually written as a nested setback. So there is one setback which calls directly another setback and so on and so on. So what we are doing here is first we are splitting off um, a shape which is going away from the street. So first we have the street distance and then the selector street.front that gives a yard and the remainder what remains in the back after this yard has been generated um, it will get split again with the back distance so the first step is splitting off the yard in the front the second step is splitting off the little yard in the back with a different distance here the back distance and then the next step the third step is actually, um, by the way, there's a typo, side distance, um, and there we go, regenerate, and then we see the, fir the third step is the side distance, which says street.side gives yard again, these two green shapes here, and then the remainder obviously is the footprint, or could be the footprint. Okay, so this shows you a little bit how you can create the variation and how the variation was tackled in the tutorial code. So let's go on to the next concept. The next concept which is used heavily usually in, in, mass, in uh, mass modeling for urban layouts is recursions. So recursions are rules which call themselves again and again. So I've created two examples here. Let me select the start rule here, lot D. And here you see that no geometry is produced, but there's something going on in the console. So let's check out what happens here. So lot D as a start rule calls a recursion with a rule parameter. So the number or the value of 5, the integer of 5, is passed on to the next rule, which is recursion underscore D. And uh, the name for this parameter is here set as n. So whenever inside this rule body n is referenced as a name, the incoming value uh, from where the rule was called is taken. So in this case, since it is a recursion and we do not want to have endless loops because uh, it will kill, uh, it will basically kill kill city engine, or it will. Actually, some cases are handled, some endless recursions are handled as a precaution measure, but uh, it's, it's not good to have uh, endless loops in, in general. So we want to have an escape, uh, an escape uh, clause or a break statement which says, at this point I want to break out of the loop. And in this case I'm doing this by saying case or in case that the number is zero, then nil. Don't continue and delete the geometry. Otherwise, if the value is larger than a zero or has another value, print the value and then go back to the same rule again, recall it yourself and uh, subtract one. So this means basically it goes back, back uh, to the same rule and always prints um, the number and in the next iteration, the number is one less, and so on and so on. So the start rule was five, so it makes sense that first we have the output of five, then four, three, two, one, and zero, zero doesn't get printed because uh, the recursion was stopped here. So that's a, a very, very simple recursion. It can also get a little bit more complex, as in the following example here, which I, I think is usually a very uh, interesting way to tackle, for example, mass models. 
So I'm going to select all of these shapes here in the block and uh, I'm assigning the same start rule and I'm going to generate here. Now you see that a large variety of, of masses has been generated. So let's talk how this was coded. Okay, so in this case I have another recursion here. I'm starting at lot E and I'm starting with the extrude recursion rule. This is the this is the main recursion rule here and the input for it is in this case the number of floors. So what I'm doing here is I'm going through the whole list of number of, of numbers of floors um, and when I re or I'm doing the same countdown basically as in the other rule up here but if uh, the countdown stops if there is no more floor left to produce. And then the rest is basically just um, going on in the else statement. So what is done here, it, it looks a little bit complicated, but uh, it's actually not that easy. There are two places where actually the same happens, where just a floor is extruded to a volume, and then the side faces are created as facades, and then the top is created as the top shape itself, and the rest of the code here, the rest of the line, actually refers back to the re uh, to the rule to create the uh, the recursion. Here you see this the n minus one. So if this floor here has been generated, um, then go back and cr try to create the next floor. Now, in this part here, this is the special case here. Um, in 30% of the cases, what I'm doing is. I am splitting the the floor shape a um, little bit to make it smaller. I'm actually cutting it um, along the longest edge. The, um, this is um, written here. I am I am aligning the scope onto or to the longest edge before I hand the geometry back over to the recursion, and then I'm splitting basically. Um, by some chance, some part of this polygon away, and then I continue to extruding uh, to the full volume. Um, it sounds a little bit um, tricky in the code, but uh, what it basically does is, with a chance of 30% for each of the floors, one split is done to reduce the volume when the um, when the building basically grows. And um, yeah, this is just one very simple way of how you can use recursions in the actual tutorial here um, in the code which is described in the tutorial PDF. The recursions are written differently um, with different geometries and uh, a different approach in general. But the, the idea or the principle of the recursion is basically the same. So I'm not going to continue with texturing. Uh, you could go in and, as an exercise, try to assign the facade, um, the facade rules also on a on a similar recursive um, rule set which you have created yourself, for example. Okay, so that's the conclusion for this video, and I hope to see you in the next video.